I want to call to order the Bunnell City Commission workshop. This is a budget workshop, Thursday, September the 12th, 2019. It is 6.01. We get Santa to salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Commissioner Nobles. Here. Commissioner Baxley is excused. Vice Mayor Rogers, Here. Commissioner Rieger. Here. We have our uh, department heads and members of the public. Thank you for being here and welcome. So I'm going to turn this over to Shana. Is that right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> our finance director. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Very good evening, everyone. Um, you need a mic. There we go. Better? Yes. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, so we're here tonight to discuss the proposed 2019-2020 budget. Uh, you are all given the books that include all the line item detail. I believe on Monday, Kristen was able to get that to you. And so what I wanted to start with, if I could just have a few minutes, is a presentation that basically summarizes. I've given you a copy at each of your seats. Um, but it basically summarizes everything that is in the document you were given Monday. Um, as I said, it's more in a summary fashion. And it hopefully will give a little bit of clarity to help answer some of your questions. But anything that you still have questions about, feel free at any time to just go ahead and ask. But um, So the general fund is what we're discussing tonight. is an overall budget increase from the original 1819 adopted budget of $942,125, or 27.75%. We're gonna go into a little more detail, but it's attributable to additional personnel requests, other personnel adjustments, operating costs, and capital outlay requests. And this budget is created with a millage rate of 6.4300. That's the rate that you approved to send to the property appraiser earlier this summer, it went out on the trim notices. And that rate is 5.17% above the rollback rate of 6.114, which means that this budget includes $146,013 more in Avalorum revenues than in the current year budget. We turn it to the next one. I try to give you an overview of kind of revenues and expenditures over the last several years. If you look 2014 to 2018 there, we have the actuals. So this, those are not budget numbers, those are the audited financials that actually show cash in and cash out for those years. For 2019, um, this is year to date through Monday. Of course, the year doesn't end until September 30th and there will still be invoices and things, payments being received after September 30th that will be applied. So that column of course will change before it's audited. And then the 2020 budget. And so you can kind of look and and compare where, where was the city at what point in time, when were revenues higher than expenditures and vice versa. This kind of gives you um, a little bit of a detail here. And one thing to point out with that cash in and cash out is this also includes any debt proceeds. So there was times that um, money was borrowed. That is included in the revenue. And the next one, this is your general fund uh, revenue budget. The first column is um, your original budget that was adopted last September. Second column is what's been included in your books and of course the difference. And you can look and see, as I mentioned, the ad valorem is increasing. Um, that's because property values went up even though you're not increasing your millage rate, you get additional revenue because the values increased. And then this also includes budget for some delinquent ad valorem that's expected in the upcoming year. Um, other taxes. Um, appears to be an, a significant increase there, but if you look down at the other, you see a decrease of 96,000. That's just because some, some um, half cent sales tax for the local option was just reclassified. So really it's a wash whenever you look at that. It's very little difference in that category. Your permits and fees are expected to increase slightly. State revenue sharing, 
money comes from the state increasing slightly charges for services you can see an increase um, the two things there are of course your enterprise funds being your water and sewer fund and your solid waste um, they pay fees to the general fund charges for services those are for the things that the employees in the general fund the administrative work that they do they get compensated or reimbursed back from those enterprise funds and then there's also rent paid from those funds over to the general fund to help fund this municipal complex and the space that they rent and the utilities and things that they need for their operations but overall um, you can see your revenues are projected to increase a little over three hundred sixty three thousand dollars in the upcoming year which is a ten point seven two percent increase so what do you do with the money that you receive so here is a summary <laughs> so here's a summary that kind of breaks down um, by function almost pretty much all of your departments and you can see just like any other local government um, the largest portion of course goes to public safety there for police um, your second largest portion is public works um, and then again you can kind of just look and and see the breakdown between all of the other departments so to look at the uh, expenditures in more detail on the next slide we've broken it down between personal services operating capital debt service grants and aid and transfers so here you can see personal services um, is projected to increase by more than 380,000 after this each slide kind of gives you tells you exactly what these things are so I won't spend a lot of time going through them but you can see your operating increase 400,000 capital increase almost a hundred thousand debt service is down very slightly and then your transfer um, that particular transfer is what gets transferred to pay the debt service on the municipal complex that's what that sixty seven thousand dollars is so if you turn to the next page just to kind of recap what we've just gone through your revenues are expected to increase three hundred sixty three thousand dollars and your expenditures the way that they've been determined what is needed is expected to increase nine hundred and forty two thousand dollars so you can see there's a difference of five hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars so what we're hoping for is some guidance on how you want to balance the budget and so of course you have several options one is to balance the budget using the, the revenue terminology from the state is called cash forward on that side but that's also known as fund balance or equity reserves or your savings account different people use different terminology but it all means the same thing so essentially what that is is do you want to take five hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars that you already have in the bank that would otherwise just be equity or reserves and use it to pay for these additional expenses in the upcoming year another option is to reduce that number and a third option is some combination maybe there's some things you want to reduce and then the rest you want to use cash forward to pay for and then of course there's always considerations so level of service provided anytime you're going to um, cut anything out of the budget there's going to be an effective you know level of service that's going to decrease so those are considerations all the departments are prepared to tell you what they have put forth in their budget and why they need it and what that means if they don't have it um, another consideration is fiscal sustainability um, usually if you're going to use your cash forward to fund something best practice is to only do that for things that are non-recurring such as you save up money to build a building or something um, that's going to um, not occur again if it's going to fund things that are going to reoccur then you just need to um, be mindful that that means you're starting next year in the exact same spot um, where you are now looking for that five hundred seventy eight thousand dollars again um, and other consideration of course is funding for future budgets or any unanticipated cost that it may occur so if anything comes up and you know hopefully we never have a terrible storm but we just went through that last week but if you did have a lot of damage how are you going to pay for that you know um, things for bond ratings they look at how much cash you have in the bank just different considerations as far as that goes so with that said 
what I've done is tried to put together, okay, well, what makes up that difference? What is it that is needed in this upcoming year that's driving that increase? So looking at personal services first, um, again, remember this is just the general fund. So I tried to put little notes because, um, you know, everyone knows there's about 60 positions, but if you just see 39.75 full-time equivalents here, you'll wonder. We're only talking about the general fund. So there's a note that there's also 20.75 um, full-time equivalents in your proprietary funds. So for those um, full-time positions, there's budgeted a 1% COLA effective October 1st. There's also a 2% merit, but it's different this year. Instead of being a step, it's a one-time bonus to be paid out on, yes ma'am? You're good. Oh, sorry. I, see. She, I thought she waved. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're going to let you do your thing and then okay. we'll do ours. All right. <laughs> and then, um, and you can see that that costs approximately $47,000 in the general fund. Uh, medical insurance, now we won't know until May. That's when the policy will renew. But um, they have um, budgeted for an expected up to 10% increase. We hope it won't be that, but we won't know for a while. Workers' comp, um, those rates are set and given to us, and it's increasing by $19,000. Of course, the state sets the retirement rates for FRS, and those come out every July 1st. So those rates could change this year. Um, three of those FTEs are new positions. One is a police officer <coughs> with benefits, budgeted at $61,000. One's a detective for the police department, budgeted at $70,000, including their benefits. And one is an admin assistant um, projected to work 25 hours a week, which means they um, would still have retirement, but they won't have the cost of health care and the other benefits. Um, salary adjustments. Chief of Police proposed increasing his pay and including benefits that would cost $8,000. City Clerk, including um, benefits, would cost $2,500. And the City Manager's car allowance um, increased by $2,400. Operations, um, I didn't put every little dollar on here because there's a lot of line items. I just tried to highlight the larger ticket items. But there's $46,000 for um, remodel or build out of the commission chambers. There's vehicle leases, um, four vehicles for public works and four vehicles for the police department, two vehicles for recreation. You can see their totals there. And then again, I put in parentheses, this doesn't include the utilities because they're in the water and sewer, but it is there. They are planning on leasing eight vehicles in the upcoming year. Um, Tyler Contact, Content Manager is another module um, expected for the upcoming year. Flagler County GIS services, I think Dr. Jackson was working with the county on um, a way to get services from their GIS department and pay on a work order basis for needs. Uh, computer replacements of $30,000, a firewall refresh of $10,000, website refresh of $10,000. Uh, PD is asking for Class C uniforms of $7,500. Engineering services, um, $25,000 to contract out when we need engineering services for public works. Elm Street Railroad Crossing maintenance is the big one, $112,000. Um, increase the road repair budget by $4,000. Uh, they want to put AC maintenance agreement on the buildings to where they come out, I believe Kristen said twice a year, to service the, the AC units. ADA compliance at parks at $10,000, um, mulch and grass seed for parks, a little over $10,000, and security cameras for parks, $6,500. <clears throat> then in your capital expenses, I just realized that the computers, I have the little notes on the bottom that say some items need to be reclassed from capital to the appropriate, and it was also on the operating, I just realized. So the computers, firewall, and website was just on the other slide, so I've already pointed that. That's not again so you can mark those off of this list that's the second and third line yes ma'am and then upgrade to the city surveillance system twenty thousand dollars land acquisition for affordable housing ten thousand dollars increased road resurfacing by five thousand dollars 
speed reduction devices for $5,000, culvert repair or replacement for $25,000, and a bat wing for $19,000. So really that's the summary um, of how the proposed budget compares to the current year budget. And then what's next is of course on Monday you have your first public hearing at six o'clock. And then on the following Monday, right before your regular meeting, you'll have the final budget hearing. And basically um, we're here to answer any questions that you have and also seek your direction on how you want that budget to be balanced for Monday night for the public hearing. That's a lot of money to look to balance. So Commissioner Baxley could not be here tonight. His wife is sick. And so he sent some comments through, I think, the clerk or city manager, somebody. And they gave it to me. And he uh, requested that I read his comments for the record. So <clears throat> first, I would like to apologize for my absence. My wife is sick in bed and needs me at home to take care of her. I would like to thank the financial director for all the hard work she put into the budget. For the past five years, we have cut the budget to the bone to balance and build a reserve that the auditor suggested we should have for emergencies. If you remember, it took us almost two years to get reimbursed from FEMA. The solid waste department has a very small reserve. If we deplete our general fund reserve, we could be in serious trouble. All the financial directors I have talked to have stated you do not want to use your reserves to fund continuing operations. We are using a total of $546,833 from our general fund reserve to balance the budget. At this rate, the general fund reserve will be depleted in three years. And then he goes into specifics. On page 62, the general fund budget for 2018 is $3,394,960. This year's proposed budget is $4,337,085, which is an increase of $943,125. If you use the 2018-19 activity of $3,267,124 and subtract that from the year's proposed budget is an increase of $1,069,961. I cannot support using general fund reserves of $546,833 to balance the budget. And when he talks about the revenue sheets, uh, page 1 and 8, Avalorum Taxes current 18-19 budget shows $44,800 revenue more than the total budget 18-19 shows dropped down to Avalorum Tax Delinquent shows $30,711. Historically, delinquent has been $10,000. I believe some proceeds may have been misclassified as delinquent by budgeting fiscal year 2020. Delinquent Avalorum Taxes of $35,000. You are overstating Avalorum by 25000 Historically, the collection rate used in Avalorum was 96%. Why is it increased this year to 97%? The franchise electric fee of 19 year to date was $169,797.20, I guess. Um, no, no, 20 year budget is $258,711, an $88,914 increase. Page 4 of 8, administrative fees, 19 activity was $534,948. Year 20 budget is $632,885, which is a $97,937 increase. The items I have listed show an overstated revenue of $211,851 plus the $546,833 taken from the reserve is a total of $758,684. Page six on the revenue total, uh, 19 was 3,410,668. 20 budget is 4,337,085, an increase of 926,417. If you take this $211,851 overstated revenue, and the $546,833 from Rev Firm Reserve, you have an increase of $167,733. That's it. Okay. <laughs> what was that? No, I was just asking her whether or not she was able to follow. I'm going to give it to her. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I heard. Of course, if there's anything you want me to look at to answer now, I'll be happy to. Otherwise, I can also get back well, to Well, I mean, his, I guess we, you know, well, we all, I mean, it's it's a question. He's talking about the, um, you had already said the reserves to balance is for 546833 
he's saying that the revenue is overstated. Um, you need to talk in the mic because we can't hear you. I don't think the mic's on. It's on. Oh. I was explaining to uh, Shana that I was saying to her that she probably need to explain that the revenue, uh, state revenue estimates, uh, actually they, their calculation is at 95%. And, and so uh, instead of us uh, uh, estimating at 95 or 96, uh, our estimation was at 97%. Just to, Just to Avalon, yes. Yeah, I mean, I heard I heard a lot of your questions. I can't remember them all. <laughs> Let me just give this to you. But yes, um, so the Avalorum is um, put in the budget at 97%. Um, the statute says it has to be at least 95%, but you could go anywhere between there and 100%. Um, I think, I mean, that was put in before me, but I believe that Lauren looked, I went back and looked behind what Lauren did, and she did it based on prior year, <laughs> kind of the trend that we were actually expecting at least 97%. So we felt comfortable that that trend would continue. And as far as I remember, one of the questions he was saying is the delinquent Avalorum was only 10,000, now it's budgeted at 35, and he felt that that must have been because it was um, uh, not classed correctly in the past, and that's right, it wasn't. They have been depositing, it's not that it's not right, let me correct that. They were putting all of the Avalorum into the one Avalorum. They weren't breaking out the delinquent. And then just last fiscal year, they started breaking out the delinquent. And um, we have collected over 30,000 so far this year, and our budget is 35,000. We do think that's reasonable um, in the upcoming year. Let's see, if, I don't know which other ones he had concerns about, let's see. So his next one says that on page two of eight on the revenue side, that the franchise fee for electric, which is um, about midway of the page, 001-323-1000, um, he says that it's budgeted at 258711 um, but we've only collected year to date 169797 and so he says that's an $88,000 increase, which that his calculations are fine, but if you look at the history there, last year we collected 235,000 as the total activity of actual collections. The year before was $255,000. I would need to go look at the revenue to see, um, you know, what hasn't been posted yet. But it is on. I mean, it is reasonable that that will be over 250,000. And based on the three-year history, I think the 258,000 is a good number for that estimate there. Um, the next one he talks about is on page four. <coughs> it's the administrative fees. Let's go to it. It's near the top of the page, um, 001-3413-000 there. Um, and it has increased by $97,000 from 534 in the current year to 632,000 in the upcoming year. Um, that is what I was mentioning, are the administrative fees charged to the water and sewer fund and solid waste. And that is based on a formula of the prior year audited numbers as to what the administrative departments, such as finance, HR, city manager, city clerk, those administrative functions that provide, those administrative departments that provide administrative functions to all the departments. And it's a calculation so that water and sewer and solid waste 
pay their fair share of those expenses. Um, and that number, like I said, we're paying ourselves, but they're from different funds. So that number will be that number because we will actually transfer those funds. So is that coming out of their budget or is that coming out of their reserves? It comes out of their budget annually. Yes, ma'am. It's an operating expense to those funds. Because as I'm sure you're very aware, those um, enterprise funds are supposed to be like business-like activities that mm -hmm. have to, you know, support themselves. So if the city didn't provide their administrative services, they would have to hire people to do that for them. So it basically helps, helps the city with revenue and costs them nothing more. Um, that was all his questions here. Let's see. We have a formula that's based on, off of the last year's audited. audited. Yeah, so last year's audited financials for those departments. And then that's all the questions he has. He just restates that the revenue is increasing by $926,417, which is correct. And like on the slide, I pointed out exactly um, what is driving that increase on the expenditure side. Well, we have a lot of cutting and shaving to do because we can't pull all that out of reserves. Vice Mayor Rogers. You're absolutely right. We got to figure out how we're going to cut this thing. Madam Mayor. Mr. Rieger. What are our reserves? The audit said that at this point we are at that equivalent of functioning in 51 days or what the 17 percent percent I remember the right number is that as percentage mm -hmm. and so it is it, I mean, is that totally accurate that's you know what do we have in the way of an amount in reserve so um, so you just recently had your audit report of course James Moore firm was here and they did tell you that and that's correct you the city has spent several years trying to get to that level and has accomplished that um, but remember what he's presenting to you is as of September 30th of 2018. So what it will, oh. because they're auditing the prior year. Right. So I don't have the number for you for 2019. Of course, there's a lot of ins and outs. There's a lot of payments to be processed and revenue still to be received that, of course, I've spent my short three weeks here working strictly on budget. So I don't have an answer for you. I can find out for you. But um, you did have, it was a little over a million and a half in the general fund um, as of September 30th, 2018. What was that? I don't remember the number that the auditor based. 1.5. A little over a million and a half. And what do you think we have now? No, I was just saying, I honestly don't know. I've only been doing budget. I can find out for sure, but I've only been doing budget. I haven't gotten into that. And there's a lot of pending things that haven't been processed yet as well. And of course, that final number won't be determined until you close out the books from September 30th of this year. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. And the Elm Street Rail Railroad crossing, is that is that something we have to do? It's a mandate. Yes, that is mandated by the Mandated by who? The Florida East Coast Railroad. And what if we don't do it? I, I, I'm pretty sure they would. Shut it down? The crossing? Yeah. Then oh. we have two instead of three. No, I don't think they would shut it down, but no. I think they would to proceed they would with take legal us to court. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Well, how many years would it take for us to take us to court and then we just plead that we didn't know and... But we're being recorded. Yeah, you know, I know we're being recorded. It just irritates me that the railroad has such authority that they can send us this kind of a, a figure and there's no recourse and there's no negotiation and there's no options. And, it's just and, a, it's and, a huge amount of money. And it's and thank goodness that uh, they, they sent it to oh. us uh, to budget yeah. because I've been in situations <coughs> where you received it in the middle of the year. It's unbelievable. Madam Mayor. And, Vice Mayor Rogers. Is there any breaking this thing up over three years? Excuse me? Is there anything, can we break it up over two or three years? Is it? Something's got to be paid this year. It's got to be paid as soon as they're done. They're invoicing the city. Um, it could come in lower than 112,000, but we won't know until they're done with the work and they invoice us. And I said it before, they're worse than the mafia. Yeah. Concur. We're being recorded. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Mr. Reed, what exactly, what exact work needs to be done there? What is the nature of the work? They, they decide. Yeah, they decide that they need to redo the crossing, whether it's it's uh, railroad ties and, and, and actual rail and paving and stone. I, I couldn't even begin to... And they decide. gave us this number? Yes. Oh, they did, did they? They gave us this number. Well, and, and it, once again, in years past, they didn't share the number until the work was <coughs> done, and uh, you, you ended up receiving the invoice that you didn't budget it for. And so I think the, uh, the community municipalities have been crying out, so they need to, they, that's why they gave an, us an estimate up front. So what they gave us, did it have a time frame or deadline on it? They, they stated that they're going to, they're planning on starting work uh, at the beginning of the year, January 1st time frame. So they're going to do the work and we pay for it? They do right. the work and we pay for it. They invoice us after it all. They do not make a penny on it. They charge us what it costs. Oh, yeah. So we have $380,562 in personal services that we're talking about and operating expenses is 400066 and we're 500 and what was it 586,000 that we're trying to balance short. yeah 578 578 275 yeah and the difference you keep hearing like 546 versus 578 just to let you know um the uh the, let's see, I think Dr. Jackson agreed for the police department to roll over something they're not purchasing by the end of the year in order to purchase it next year. So there's um, on the revenue page, on page six, there's actually um, two cash forward amounts. There's 546,833 and it says that's what's needed to balance the budget. There's also $20,542 um, for the police department. So that's what makes up the 578 just to not confuse you hearing two different numbers there and that's on the revenue side yes yeah, so your cash board that's what yeah that's what you're using to plug that difference Madam Mayor. Mr. Rieger. And I don't know that these items listed here are the only places to pull money from. You know, we've got an entire budget here that we're looking at, so there could be some other things besides what's in here, number right. one. Number two, I mean, I've got about seven budgets at home. They're, they're all very different, all different calculations, and uh, some things are missing, some things are not. And I, I'm feeling a little bit flabbergasted by it. But I'm looking here at the built out of the Coquina City Hall, which was at $100,000. So where did that other, beyond the 46000 that we may or may not do for this building, where did the other 50 some thousand go? The, uh, well, the, to build out Coquina, uh, we did meet with a contractor, actually called several, uh, to get those estimates for that one. That's not the question. Okay. This was in one of the budgets that we had. It's no longer in there. Correct. We were so one's it. rearranging numbers. Where do the other 40 some odd thousand dollars go? Yeah, that's what she was explaining to you is that basically the first estimate was for uh, retrofitting the Coquino building. I know. And then we decided not to, to do that. I know. And the 46,000 is for this facility. I know. We didn't budget the 100000 anywhere. It's not anywhere in the current budget. It's not in this budget. It started in one budget. We removed that entire project and replaced it with a build-out of this building. They Are you telling you specifically where that other $60,000 went because it's dispersed through the budget? That's, that's what she's trying to tell you. That's a lot of money for dispersing. I'm just wondering where. Well, we've got 942,000. We got a hunt, or 400, 500, 500, 578,000 that we got a hunt. So, 
and 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 based in doing this operating list as well as the capital list uh, one of the things that Shane mentioned is that in consideration we need to think about what level of service we we want or we don't want and when you look at the operating expenses as well as the capital uh, pretty much that's tied directly to the level of services and and you just need to share with us you know what you don't want us to 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 do or reduce and that's what we ask So to go back to Commissioner Rieger, I don't know if this helps at all, but one of the things you said is, you know, these aren't all the items in the budget, which you're absolutely correct, it's not. This was to kind of show you what's different in addition to from what you were already providing this year. So there are other things. And then the other thing is if the 100,000, which that was cut before me, so I'm not quite sure what, what it is, but had that still been in here, the $578,000 would be $678,000 that you would be looking for. Does that kind of explain when you say, well, where did the money go? Because your expenditures, instead of being $4.3 million, would be $4.4 million if you plan to spend another $100,000 in addition to what's already included. Okay, I've missed something there. That's, that, that doesn't work in my mind. If you take if you originally had $100,000 for a specific item and it's no longer there, then that's a reduction in the expenses. Right. So your, so your expenses would have been $4.4 million right now if it was still there. But it's only $4.3 million now. Oh, you see what I'm saying? The totals. Yes, ma'am. The totals. So okay. that means, yeah. So you would be looking for six hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars if you still wanted to fund that project. So the documents that we, the other six or seven documents like this that we were looking at, they weren't balanced. I'm sorry, I, don't, I wasn't here. <laughs> this is the document that's with the, with the real numbers. That's that we know are for sure. So the other documents you had, because also in that meeting, uh, there was some direction. Uh, one was, uh, hey, we're not gonna spend $100,000 on the Coquina building. We need to look at it here. So we went back and we came up with the numbers for uh, retrofitting this building. There were some other directives that was, that was given during that meeting. And so what you, what you have in front of you now is the budget. And there is a five hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollar difference or deficit, and so what we need to do is uh, decide which operating as well as capital expenses, if we're going to do it that way, um, uh, that we're going to delete, or once again a combination of uh, taking some from the reserves. So. So some of these items that are in here then were developed by the different departments. So if I look at some of these things, um, firewall refresh, $10,000. What does that really mean? Engineering services, $25,000. Can, can any of our departments head say, oh, we could live without something that's here? Can anybody help with that? What are engineering services at $25,000? I think each of them can answer. The $25,000 for engineering services is, is being money put aside for the MS4, the stormwater system, which will require engineering services. Um, until we are able to create the stormwater fee and stormwater utility, it is coming out of the general fund, but hopefully by next budget year, it will not. It'll have to be its own enterprise fund. Can we not look for grants for that? Grants stormwater. For for the engineering, grants well, don't normally cover engineering. They cover the, the, the actual operation or the, or the project itself. And, and sadly to say, the MS-4 is one of those mandates from, you know, it's a EPA, DEP mandate uh, that we have to develop a stormwater program. Uh, in order to develop that, you have to do your engineering. 
Uh, so you can, at some point, we have to come come forward to you and say this is what's going to cause to retrofit our stormwater uh, systems that will be in line with the uh, uh, MS4 permit and, and, and say, hey, our recommendation will be to do a utility so that basically the general fund will not have to bear that cost. Um, that, I mean, basically, they are being really aggressive about every city in this Flo in Florida that meets a certain population threshold that we basically retrofit uh, whatever broken, uh, failing stormwater system and come up with dollars uh, basically to maintain that. And as we have new development, commercial and industrial, making sure that the appropriate systems are in place to manage stormwater. Then why is it on this list if it's something we can't do without? It's not an expendable item for in this operating expense list. Well, the list is not totally expendable or not. She's just listing things. But I do think it would be helpful to go down the list and say what's mandated and what's not. Okay. I think that's your point, Dr. Okay. Commissioner Rieger. Yep. <laughs> no point in looking at it if we got to do it. Right. Madam Mayor. Commissioner Nobles. What is the Humane Society? What do they do? They come pick up stray dogs and cats. We have a contract with them. $18,750? Yeah, I think at one time we were paying like 32000 and we brought we got it broken down. So they now, I think they still give us a report, don't they? they of, yes, they do give us, we're, we do not have a contract with them. They charge us per animal in a flat rate per month, but we do not actually have a contract with them, so they can yeah. change those rates at any time and we can't say anything. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see here. It's, $833 per month? Yes. $833.33. That's for service. Well, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> do they pick up, do they write receipts of every dog they pick up and they have dog, dog or cat, animal, I have a, an area or uh, address, and then I just verify, uh, I go into the Flagler appraisers and see where the address and everything to make sure it's Benel and not another city. And if it's another city, then I challenge the bill. Does it and that's called intake and housing. So that's one part of the bill. Then the other is just the straight service that's uh, every month. Well, that explains everything. A friend of mine, they called her dog off the porch they got it on video, whistled for it, hollered for it, for it to come out there, and they caught it and put it in there and took it off. And she got it on video, and there was a big stink over it. And she finally got the dog back, and they didn't charge her for it. Jeez. Last year, we paid for the same dog three times that got ran away from Palm Coast, but it kept being found on US-1 in Bunnell. And three times it was picked up, and we paid for that dog to be picked up three times in Benel and returned to its owner in Palm Coast. Does anybody else provide this service? No. Wouldn't it be cheaper for somebody else to go and pick it up and return it home? So in that situation, is, can we have some sort of an agreement with the Humane Society that the person in Palm Coast pays for it before the person gets the dog back since it's not our dog in our community? Because we don't have a contract, we can't argue. They're, they charge us for every dog picked up or cat surrendered in our jurisdiction. So if it's surrendered, so if somebody calls in about feral cats in and around their house and they pick up 10 cats, we pay for 10 cats to be picked up. And that's at $85 per animal. Wow. Crazy. All right, can we go down this list of operating expenses and you tell us what's mandated and what's not? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. The uh, operant commission chamber uh, remodel build out. It's not a mandate. So would you please just say the ones that are mandated? Just pick out. Pick, just tell us what are mandated, and then we'll look at the others. I'm sorry. <laughs> Elm Street Railroad Crossing. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. The engineering services you Engin said will be mandated. In engineering services. Um, the uniforms FOP contract. I'm sorry, where's that? I said the uniforms are an FOP contract. Yeah. Where was that? It's PD Class C uniform, $7,500 dollars in the middle of the page. We're on operating expenses, $400,066 are going down the list, or they're telling us. So you see PD Class C oh, uniforms. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I got it. The ADA compliance at parks. to capital expenses. Is that all on that operating expenses? Yeah, that's all on the operating expenses. Those uh, computer stuff is not mandated that we need the it for firewall, ADA? The firewall is, yes. Sorry. What is a refresh? I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, what is a refresh? I don't know. But if it's mandated, no. it. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. The, the we have several of them. They, they, they are a security device that protects us from the internet. Um, the ones we're operating on now are two generations behind the, walk, the firewall refreshes, all the cyber security issues and stuff like that that everybody's been having. This refresh will bring us up to the current technology. So we need both, I'm, Madam Mayor, <laughs> we need both of these, firewall and website refresh. They're different items, different that's, subjects. That's different animals, yes, ma'am. Yes. But we need both of them for security? Uh, I would certainly do the firewall for security. Uh, the uh, the website. This the website is actually an item that we've kicked down the road a couple times. I know it's been in my budget several times. Uh, I got to go ahead in eighteen fiscal year eighteen to do it in April. But we all know what happened the end of April. <laughs> so we we didn't what? do it. You, you weren't here. That's correct. The, can, 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 the, the city manager at the time was let go. Oh. So he gave me the okay the first part of April to get started. The end of April he was let go, and then <laughs> like, well, there's not much need doing it without a city manager. To that's in your that's in the current budget. Well, and the other thing that we do that has happened every year or most years is come summertime, spending comes to a halt because we want to be able to get to the end of the year without going over the budget and having enough money for the carry forward to cover us on October and November until the property tax money starts to come in. So traditionally it's been no spending in the summer unless it's absolutely essential. Um, is that not an accurate? The answer to your question is no. It's not in my fiscal year 19 budget. The website is not. We also wanted to wait for a uh, logo redesign. We're, we're going to put it in, included in this year's budget through in somebody else's budget. There's going to be a uh, logo contest. That's my understanding. I mean, unless something changed. There's going to be a logo contest to redevelop a logo for us to put in the, web, the new website. <coughs> All right, capital expenses. Upgrade a uh, city surveillance system. It's not a mandate, but it's a high public safety item. What is it, Madam Mayor? What is it? Mr. Jackson, what is it? Donnie, can Donnie you what is it? Come and speak. <laughs> Several years ago, uh, prior to me, um, the County got into and, and it's not even a written agreement. Um, the housing authority came to the city and said, "Can you do this?" And they wanted a system of cameras put up. And apparently, there was some debate back and forth, and we decided yes. Well, without any documentation, no agreement, no anything, the, the housing authority came to us and stripped us a check for twenty-five thousand dollars. We put the system up. We've been maintaining it all these years. Those cameras are old. Yeah, um, they're going to be replaced. Can we get a grant for that? Well, honestly, I thought that was a grant. Since, since you mentioned it, the Housing Authority has applied for a grant for just this type of system. 
right. We don't know if they got it or not. So would that just be in the Housing Authority or would it be in the south end of Benel or just uh, wherever? Okay. Okay. Um, Madam Mayor, so this just $20,000 is to upgrade the existing system that's in the Housing Authority? Essentially, we would do a forklift upgrade. We'd take that, everything that's in there out into the new system. And what, what I'm, am, am, am I hearing that the current system doesn't work? Well, this is not in the Housing Authority, are these, these cameras, right? They're on the right of way in that area. It's the only place they are. Uh, I thought there were cameras around the school and the park and uh, down some of the streets. Different terminology. Security system versus surveillance system. The surveillance system is mostly in the health department. So the existing system doesn't work? We put it in just several years ago and it's useless? It doesn't work? Is that what I'm hearing? The, the surveillance system works. The problem is that the officers aren't able to look at it anymore because they all have Windows 10 machines. They, they've, they've advanced their, their technology, but those cameras are still in the old, I mean, I don't, I don't remember how old they were. I'm gonna say it was uh, around 2010, so they're probably at least nine years old. Um, they are analog cameras hooked to a digital, <laughs> yeah. I, I hear you. Um. Could the next two? Could I? Could I? I'm sorry. Could I ask the chief what your opinion is on this scenario? Well, let's run through the list before we start getting back into the nitty bitty because we got a lot of cutting to do here. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. The next two is the culvert repair replacement, twenty-five thousand dollars, and once again, that's tied back to the MSW. Uh, the MS4. culvert repair replacement is tied to MS4, um, and it, it, it's it, that's pretty much mandated. That you need to have it done and also a, a certain level of services uh, to prevent flooding in areas and, and replace uh, the woodland culvert repair was rather expensive that one would have almost eaten that twenty five thousand hmm. so dollars that one was was, was not cheap are so having, it's, i'm sorry go ahead are y'all having this done or doing it yourself what's that culvert repair we're doing it in-house so what's the twenty five thousand dollars for if we're doing it in house, I mean, is the, the culvert, materials, materials of culvert is that expensive? How, how many? How hmm. many? It, it depends on the size and which ones need need to be replaced at, at the time. Right now, since our budget is so limited, we are on a reactionary force on those. We, we find one that's that's rusting out and, and forming sinkholes and going to undermine the road, and we go from there. Yeah, we, we don't have the budget culvert to actually range anywhere from three fifty to. $900 for the actual culvert yes so the woodland culvert was two 24 inch culverts uh, multiple yards of road base and asphalt to repair you remember that big large section of concrete and we asphalted that that was rather expensive the concrete bag head wall we had to build there that one was rather expensive and then adding labor uh, the hourly rates into that as well of the employees and fuel but now adding the hourly wage, they get paid anyway. So why are we adding the hourly wage to this process? We, we do that with all of our projects, just so we can track how much everything costs. But it inflates the price because we're paying them anyway. Right. You wouldn't. Yeah. You would never pay that for what he's talking. He's talking about a prior project and the calculations. He said that one project costs almost twenty-five thousand. I think he's just saying as a whole with the city. But no, you would never pay. That's in their salary, so yeah, that would not be salary. a portion. We don't pay on top. Correct. correct. Yeah. You're correct. So, so the number could be reduced. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is then that number yeah. wouldn't be that high in the well, budget if you if you don't have the employee salary as part of that. Correct. Right, but I don't think this but is for. I was using he that as an cost. example of one right. one job cost. Yeah, I don't money. think that twenty five thousand is for any specific job. I think mm -hmm. it's for the next year. So he doesn't cost it. So these are for culverts anything. and asphalt, basically, mm -hmm. to do the jobs. Right. Okay. The, the next one is the back wing more, and this is really tied to the contract with DOT. And as I understand it, if we don't have that back wing more, uh, we pretty much should consider giving up the, the state contract. It's on its last leg. We've spent uh, 
three thousand dollars this year getting it rewelded we're welding rust and we we can mow the, the state road right away with mowers the brand new mowers we just bought but they would last two months and then they'd be done so the brand new equipment we bought so we, we kind of need that yeah, if we're going to keep the state road contract. If you're going to keep that contract, that's pretty much a must there. But what kind of bat wing mower is it? Which one? For the for 19000 that we're trying to get? Don't have a brand just yet. Bush Hog is more than 19000 so we're probably not going to go with Bush Hog. We're going to find whatever we can. It went up a lot. I know when I was with DBI, I was paying twelve five for a bat mm -hmm. wing. How long ago was that? Five years ago. Mm -hmm. Of course, y'all with the state and everything, y'all should be able to get it cheaper. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm confident for nineteen thousand, we'll be able to get a new one. That's that's, but a quality product. Less. It could be less, right? Could be less. It could be less. It could be more. No, <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> so those are, if you, the first tier of priorities. Commissioner Rieger. <laughs> Item number right, one right there, Commission Chamber rebottle billed out at 46000 <sighs> I suppose we could probably live without any billed out, but there are a couple things that we would need for improvements, and that is to improve this table scenario, as you've discussed many times. Mm -hmm. So we can do that. That should be able to be done relatively inexpensively. It and wasn't the uh, table like $2,500. I thought I saw some $3,500. It is in the budget. It is not included in the build out. So that is in its own, under the legislative budget, a, to purchase that table for $3,500. Okay. And is the U shape that you had requested. And we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. And then the extension on that mic. It's not asking for a lot, but it needs an extension. So then we can we can cut out this forty-six thousand dollar chamber remodel. Sounds like it. Any consensus on that here? So going down the list, we have uh, vehicles, which I mean they need vehicles, and the lease program is is certainly an improvement over buying straight up. The benefits are you know huge. Um, May I add something? Sure. Um, some of the vehicles. Uh, we're going to offset some costs too um, because like the old vehicles most of our vehicles all the dodges are pretty much deadline um so we're going to she, basically get rid that's she's accounted for that in the revenue oh did you the additional yes. revenue i'm sorry yeah uh, good thought though yeah <laughs> no we want to be in there because it it it's important you know what he's saying there is an offset, offset. 11,000. yeah all your dodges broke down yes um, the, the, the nice one, 2012, we have one still running. Uh, the engine just went out on the, uh, the 2012. It's going to cost us about $9,000 to get it fixed, so we're going to trade that in. Um, I would suggest you stay away from Dodge. Yeah. Oh, I know. We've not had any luck. No. <laughs> they are cool-looking cars, though. <laughs> Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. Um, during the uh, hurricane, uh, the city manager and myself got called out. We, we had to go rescue a deputy sheriff. And uh, they were driving a uh, Ford, all wheel drive, Explorer. And they just preached to us that they were junk. They were there oh. giving them and a I, I problems. Want I, I, I want to I'll, I'll have to rebut that. Uh, Rear rim problems. They were giving them transmission problems. This is this is not. This is what we heard from from two deputies. So you know. Well, the good news is those are races, so they're yeah. going to be under warranty regardless of what we buy. And both those vehicles had over 120,000 miles or 2014 when they first came out. The Dodges, 
you know, like I said, I don't care what kind of cars we get. We just want to make sure they're tested. So I went out and looked at progressive uh, agencies um, throughout the state, um, where they were going, talked to mechanics, um, and they have worked through. So the Dodgers are nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to turn down any vehicle, all right? It's just that they haven't been on the road long enough, or they're just coming out. So they're not road tested yet for law enforcement. See how they work, just like these 2014s. And those in particular deputies work on the west side, and those vehicles are not equipped to work on the west side. Uh, they need Ranch and Grove type vehicles and pickup trucks. Yeah. But they, yeah. they, they told us that uh, they were all wheel drives and that to stay away from the all wheel drives. We, we need the uh, all wheel drive. I know these are deputy sheriffs, not certified mechanics. Well, you know, they're the ones that broke down on the side of the road. <laughs> you know, uh, and they were also pool vehicles that are being used and, and damaged and, and uh, just bounce around. So I would be mad too in the middle of a storm if my car broke down. Chief, did you talk to the head mechanic there? Yes, I did. I did talk to him. And he said no one's come to him to ask him about decisions because, you know, uh, department heads can uh, make any decision they want to on kind of vehicle. He said to stay away from Dodges. I agree. That's what we get, we get. I'm not gonna turn well, the good thing, as the mayor indicated, Vice Mayor, we, this will be under warranty. And uh, and basically, they they will actually be doing the maintenance on it. So, and the other thing is that a part of the program is actually to start tracking the repair um, uh, frequency. So, right. they don't yeah. have a track record. They don't have a track record. Yeah, I know that St. John's, Putnam, um, Orange County, also, uh, every also one of them uh, is Lucia. all went to Ford. Yes. Every one of them. Now, the same kind of car, I mean, you can get any kind you want. There's going to be some bad in some of them, but you get a Dodge, you can almost guarantee it'll be 90% of them bad. Whatever you guys want us to get, I'm fine. Madam Mayor, what was, what was the make in our lease agreement that we had going on? What are we getting? We're getting lease vehicles. Yeah, but what, what kind are they? Whatever, whatever is determined. Where's the Dodges? So that hasn't been determined. Well, basically what Vice Mayor was just saying is that we, basically the staff, we went and to pick up a vehicle that was broken down and basically uh, they did not have uh, a very good um, conversation or recommendation about Fords. And so basically I came back to Chief and, and asked him to, you know, get some additional information. Um, so we were going on what was basically, you know, disclosed to us from individuals that were driving the vehicle. Yeah, but it's one individual and one vehicle yeah. out of how yeah. many do they have? I mean, the sheriff, yes. Yeah. Two individuals. So, oh, excuse me, two. Hundred percent. Two. two. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, we need to get yeah. get cutting here okay. because uh, we got a long way to go. And we're not we're not making a whole lot of progress. I mean, I agree with uh, Commissioner Baxley that we cannot pull $578,000 and $275,000 out of the reserves to cover this budget because a lot of this budget, $380,562, is personnel services, which is reoccurring. And I heard you say that if you're going to use reserves, you don't use it for reoccurring expenses. Not unless you have a plan in the upcoming year to generate a whole lot of revenue to cover it so they don't start out in that deficit from day one. Right. So we have $400,000 in operating expenses and $380,000 in, in personnel services and so that's where we're going to have to get this money from. So would it be more um, advantageous to go through the book for the detail past what's on here or this is what we just need to work with as well, far as what you have right i would say it's entirely up to you like i said this was a summary to help you better understand of course you all know the services you're currently providing you're all yeah. familiar with this year's budget um so everything you're currently doing is in this booklet plus these items so i just did it to try to assist because this is a big document and it's all line item but right. certainly there are things that you can consider in this document that are not on the powerpoint so however you would like to proceed 
in, in, in what I was hoping, low-hanging fruit, if we can identify the ones here. And yeah, but it's five and ten thousand dollars. That you know, it doesn't yeah. add up a whole lot. Well, when you when you get hundred and ten thousand for the railroad, and that's a big one. For the what now? Railroad. Yeah, and 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 basically, when you start going down through the departments, you're going to find that what you're going to be cutting is small items because pretty much it's a it's a bare bones bot uh, uh, a budget. Yeah, just like the city manager's car allowance increased to 2400 Will it use more gas now? So. And so we have three salary adjustments and we've got three um, three new position three new positions 39.75 are new positions so that doesn't make sense wait a minute three of the 39 okay all right <laughs> miss the of yeah. Yeah, i'm like what so you want to start with the personnel services well we're going to have to start and okay. do some there and do some in the yeah, operating expensive personnel services and then we can um, go back to the other two pages and then go back into the budget so what is the 1% COLA? I mean, you have both of these uh, stacked together, but what's the 1% COLA versus the 2% merit bonus? So the 1% COLA, because it is on October 1st, so it's for a full year and all the benefits and things that go with it, um, it equals 20,000 of the 47,000. The 2% merit, logically, you would say, why isn't that double the 1%? It's not <laughs> because it's, proposed to be a one-time payment and it's based on employees anniversary dates so many employees aren't going to get that um, till later and the uh, um, and the benefits of course are different paid on a bonus versus increasing pay permanently and the merit can range from zero to three percent yeah. the budget is two percent to be an average yeah I don't I don't know about that one-time bonus thing Two percent merit. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, Commissioner Rager, somewhere in here in the under uh, community development, there was a note about adding three new people in community in community development. I'll check the note, but there's no new people being added to community development. It's so already been I've, taken out. Yeah, it was taken out. Yeah, I don't. I've also noticed the notes, if you look on the salary lines, they still say a 2% COLA and a 2% step increase just because the notes haven't been changed from whenever that's what it was at one point apparently over the summer, but as cuts were made. So I tried to just give you the overview and tell you this is exactly what is in here. And the numbers actually reflect that. Maybe in some the cases the notes correct. don't. Well, the workman's comp is, is, is fixed. There's nothing we can do with that. Not a thing. And the insurance, I think, is also fixed until April or whenever that comes in. Right. So all we have with that is the COLA and the merit. Yeah. And the CPI is 0.3% this year. That, that was the CPI. What's the uh, minute data system? Uh, Somebody y'all fishing to hire, or somebody's coming on to help y'all. It was a proposed um, secretary to try to help defray some of the um, needs of the city manager and the city clerk and that that group. The administrative department it's a, it started as full time. We cut it to half time or to a part time, uh, so it's no longer a full time position. Uh, and they would be doing uh, working for the in the administrative department basically under the clerk's office which oversees parks and rec fleet solid waste the city clerk's office and then also helping out with city managers uh, some of his duties as well madam mayor commissioner Rieger. you professor refresh my memory did we have a full-time code enforcement officer now haven't we yeah. been doing it with a part-time yeah what is it uh, 16 weeks 16 hours who's doing code enforcement 16 24 how much is how are we doing it's 24 but it's increased because now you have the mandated ms4 when okay so stop right there what is ms4 what is that 
stormwater permitting through the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, Department of Environmental Protection, sorry. So how does that relate to code enforcement? Because there are stormwater codes now that need to be enforced by code enforcement. We Jeez. go out and do inspections, and then uh, people who failed or get caught with illicit discharge, we need code enforcement to go out and enforce those codes now. Wow. And we and we just sent what, three individuals three. to Jacksonville, was to it? To get state certified. To get state that. certified. And if you remember, Mayor, we had a, um, what do we call it? Um, a uh, DEP uh, consent. consent order. Yes. yes. And for so, storm water. Because basically, what had happened. The discharge in the canal. Well, we had to have a program, and 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 we did not have a program. And it's uh, they come out annually. They inspect. They basically have laid out uh, the the inspection, the code portion. The marketing, uh, basically, we have to come up with a uh, uh, a community education for the residential as well as for the building, uh, the the business community, and so that's all a part of that that agreement uh, that we are moving forward, you know, to to doing to keep us in compliance. So it was 24 hours, and now what is it? It's, After all it's, that, it's 40. It's 40. So it's a full yeah. time. I said it's yes. full time. And well, this is to news to me. Yes. I didn't realize that. I thought it was. We went from 16 to 24. Well, because the MS4 requires us to have that code enforcement element. So, like when people go and they mow the yards and then they take the blowers and blow it out in the street and down there, that's a violation. Because mm. they're contaminating our stormwater. Wow. All right. Well, I guess we're going to need to go through this budget line item by line item because we're not getting anywhere here. What do you think? Uh, well, you know, uh, we got a meeting Monday, right? Yeah, but that's the first budget Monday? hearing. That's the first budget hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is something we've got. We got to. We got to deal with this tonight. So we theoretically have to come with our recommended budget by Monday. Right. Yes. I would I would have liked to have had one that was balanced, you know, uh, yeah. coming into tonight. Uh, so uh, I didn't know what we were looking at before. It wasn't balanced. It didn't have been, been, you know. It, it, I feel blindsided. Well, it 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 is balanced, and in if we have a, a a we have to decide the the, the decision is whether or not we use reserves or whether or not we c cut. And, and pretty much within this budget, we've identified items that we felt were priorities and we had uh, responding to your expression of programs that you wanted us to include. And so from a level of service at this point, if we want to balance it by cutting, then we have to go through this and, and, and do that. But you all have to tell us what, what which areas you want. Then I'm still confused. I've got a stack at home. It's about six or seven budgets that we've looked at all over time. And, and, and maybe, and I, I, maybe I incorrectly presume that that was given to us as, a bal as balanced budgets. That's what I presume. Why at the last minute, all of a sudden we got we got all these problems. I presume that that was incorporated and in those previous budgets was balanced as it was. And I mean, I didn't look at some of the bottom lines. I appreciate that, but that's what I thought. And so all of a sudden, this is a surprise. All right. That's my feeling. This reminds me of the good old days. I remember. Yeah. All right, so let's see. This is, so revenues we don't need to look at. We need to start with expenses. So on page two of 78, under proposed budget sheets by department, we're gonna cut out the, the uh, chamber remodel, which is $46,000, right? Was that 46,000? But the things that we wanted and needed that were 
are, are in a different place in this budget. You know, the new table, the little bit of the work on the mic, that's in here somewhere else. She said the, the table was already budgeted. Uh, did you not, Kristen? The table was budgeted. Correct. It's in uh, line item 511-5200. It's the chamber meeting room U-shaped table at $3,500. You'll see on page 5, kind of in the middle of the page, under operating supplies. All right. Madam Mayor? Yes. There is something that permeates the whole budget that I've still been confused about. It came up before and used to be called Muni Complex. Sometimes it's called Muni Complex. I see line items in here for renting and leasing, and I am completely and totally confused on what that's all about because it appears that we're billing the costs of using office space in our city hall to the different departments. As I look through here, it seems some departments had it, some didn't, and I could not find any uniformity to the units or whatever that was being applied, and I don't know how it was applied, if it was done on per square foot basis or what, and I'm still completely and totally baffled by that, that item. So I can answer that for you. So in the past, the city has held um, an internal service fund just strictly for the cost of this municipal complex. Um, and at the end of the year, when the audit gets done, that just gets rolled back to the general fund. It gets reported still as a general fund. It doesn't get reported separately. And so what was happening, it was separated by square footage. Um, and so they would determine what does it cost to operate. So the debt service plus the utilities plus any other charges um, that they're paying for the building for the year. And then they would allocate that proportionately based on the square footage. And so there was rent. If you looked in like um, the finance portion of the budget, city manager, things like that, all of that rent was basically going from your general fund over to this internal service fund. And then your expenses were being paid and then um, at the end of the year, all of that was being rolled up to be reported as one unit. What I've done in the budget here that you're seeing is it's a general fund expense anyways. So all of those departments as far as city manager, community development, public works, finance, they're already general fund. There's no reason to be paying rent to pay yourself. So we've closed out that fund. So all of the expenses are in the general fund now, and the only departments that are paying rent now is um, water, sewer, and solid waste. That's it. I saw it in other places. It's all been taken out, I can tell you. I well, did. we'll find it. We'll, I've got notes. Okay, we'll see it. Two, see it. <laughs> Let's go. Um, what is the debt service on this property? Page two on the bottom down there, it had rent lease expense. And that was $21,522. And that's um, this year. That's year. year. Okay. All right. So there's a uh, go over to the next page, and then okay. So th that's there's none there. Then that's where you said it's been taken out. So right. it's not there. Correct. Okay. All the general. Okay. I might not have realized I didn't carry Don't across, but that. I've got some notes, so we'll see. But what is the debt service on this property? Um, the Prince total amount owed. You can get that for, I okay. mean. Later. Yeah, I mean, that's Fine. it's not relevant tonight because we okay. got to get through this. Okay. Insurance is there, um, and all of our bills are not in yet, so that went from 41 uh, at this point to 55. Page one. Page three of 78, and expenses. Right, so you have one quarter left to be allocated. Right here. Right here. Advertising, legislative advertising, um, current charges and obligations jumped from 89 to 13,001. Um, city received request to revive the Nell Beauty Initiative, added to the strategic plan, cost or to cover advertising with the program, printing, Printing the award and miscellaneous. Can we can we back that down some? Uh, Thirteen thousand. So, yeah, so go to the next page. There's also description of other items, and at the bottom, you'll see the breakdown of each cost that makes Correct. that up. Two thousand for the beautified banal. Okay. Then the Flag County Mayor's luncheon. We budget two hundred and fifty dollars for that. The National Day of Prayer that we host. 
uh, around $200 we spend on that. Uh, the Christmas and Benel event, we spent $6,500 on last year. You did uh, ask that we continue to up that and improve it each year, so we did increase that budget by 1000 this year. The uh, special event for the Halloween and Benel, all the porta potties, the man hours, everything comes out of that's the Halloween and Benel that you wanted to, we wanted us to continue to do. And then we also have the trunk retreat that we co-sponsor with the First Baptist Church. And that money there is basically just the candies and things and the decorations for the, the cards that we do, so nothing else. And then all those things add up to that, that 13,000. Okay. Keep me straight. <laughs> <laughs> now we can cut back on any of those events, but then means that we cut back on what we're doing for those events as well. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. We probably find a sponsor for the National Day of Prayer. It's not much, but it's 200. We could probably find a sponsor for the Santa costume. Right. I mean, we're talking hundreds of dollars here, but every little bit helps. So when will that need to be purchased? Mm -hmm. We can back down the Christmas event back down to six thousand dollars, and we'll do our best that we can to to throw a, a very good event for our community. Well, we need a Santa. At the we do need a Santa's costume. When I was looking at them, they were going for between one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars for those. But again, we can back down that event back down to six thousand dollars. We did spend sixty five hundred, but five hundred of that was out of my pocket. Ooh. We uh, we backed it down to five. Five thousand. We won't be able to afford the snow because the snow is half of that cost, okay. or the petting zoo, or some of the, the toys that we have to replace. So the snow is almost $3,000 uh, to bring in the real snow. Anyway. All right. Pay for snow. Yep, you gotta pay for it. You're in Florida. Mm. This Florida League of Mayors is $250, is isn't it? I know. I want <laughs> So, Miss Christian, you said uh, you could back that down to six thousand. Six thousand. There's fifteen hundred. And let's see. All right. Halloween, is there anything there? Knock out or? What page are you on? Same page. What? Same page. It's page four of 78. We don't have to participate in both if we don't want to, but I'm telling you, we've got to do the Sawmill Estates one. We right. cannot not do that. So, I mean, if you don't want to do the truck or treat over with, um, that was with the school, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's around the lake. I mean, it's a cool event. I, and yeah. how much was it? It's not that much, is it? Six fifty. Yeah. The trunk is free. How much? Six hundred fifty dollars. Correct. Yeah, and that's not. A, it's candy. It's ba yeah, basically it's the handouts because they get so many children. You have to have at least five hundred items per. And we use Sam's Club, so we go the cheapest. We get the cheapest thing that we can find to get five hundred items to provide, uh, and then. Um, like, yeah. We, um, is there any cutting in the Halloween? If we knocked it down to two thousand. So what do we spend at Halloween? Porta potties, hand wash station, and light stations. Plus That's overtime it. for all the employees who have to work those exits and uh, the food for those who are have to work all day long and that that night. Yeah, there's not really anything there. To... All right. All right. Can we skip the election? <laughs> I mean, we, if, if you're not going to go forward with a, another charter amendment, because the reason that that has increased is because there was discussion that you wanted to hold a very quick charter amendment to get redistricting done uh, before we have the census in. 
So that was what was raising those costs. So, so what would the cost be if we didn't do that? For about 3,500 would be what we would need for a presidential election. But that's in the 512 budget, not in this one. Yeah. Doesn't matter where it is, it's coming out. Memberships, publications, and books, $4,700. Is there anything there that we can uh, cut back on? Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rieger. Take out the National Register plaques for both of those, and let's go. Uh, I'm Vice President of Historical Society. Let's see what we can do about talking to them for that. Okay. So that's 700 Seven. Seven hundred. You can even get else. Okay. Anything else there? Members, no, no. You got the, the, the uh, U-shaped angles, thirty-five hundred. Yeah, we need that. Yes. All right. This is uh, membership for coalition of the homeless. How much is that? Three hundred dollars. All right. So on the next page, you have these breakouts. You have the League of Cities, Flagler County League of Cities is twenty-five. Economic development, 600. League of Mayors is 350. I thought it was 250. 350 for the League of Mayors. Uh, annual membership for <coughs> Florida League of Cities, 500. Northeast Florida Economic Development, 2,500. Northeast Florida League of Cities, 100. Flagler Volusia Coalition for the Homeless, 300. Have we been a part of that before? The Homeless, the Coalition for the Homeless? I think we take that out of there. Well, we need we need they, to be able they, to they, I know we received an invoice, a bill. That is it. The new ones on this list are the Florida Economic Development Council agency membership. So that's for three people to be involved with economic development and go to meetings and things so that we can continue to help the city grow. That is a new one. Again, it's for three people to be named as members on behalf of the city. That's $600. Uh, the, um, Florida League of Cities annual membership, uh, membership, you guys already had that. The North Florida Economic Development one is also new. I'm not sure yeah. what that one is. Yeah, that, that's the new one, and that's the one that really represents rural uh, uh, communities. And um, once again, it uh, gives us access to additional grants and resources. So what about the home Coalition for the Homeless? Are we going to get anything out of that? Because doesn't the county do that? as well i mean in the county part of that volusia flagler county coalition for the homeless yeah, have we been paying that every year no that was brand new yeah they just sent us an invoice okay we're gonna scratch that yeah i agree we'll piggyback the county on that one just for clarification that's the only one the three hundred dollar yeah. okay make sure i'm recording this right <laughs> <clears throat> all right Yeah, we're on, yeah, page six, middle of the page. We're looking at all our different little things. Chamber dinner, uh, Flagler Chamber Common Ground, annual conference, Florida League of Cities annual conference, and Florida League of Cities registration, IEMO, that's the um, elected, officials. elected officials. So those who have not been to that, that's a good thing. You probably need to go to that. And... So we have 10 units for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, well, that's only 250, though. I mean, if, if none of the commission want to go to any of those common ground breakfasts or meetings, then we can strike out 250. But we wanted to give you that option for if you wanted to attend any of those. Can you pay on a per one basis if you want to? Yes. Yeah, yeah it is. We don't, we don't register you in advance once we get the notice. If you're interested in it, then we register you for it. They're always $25 for chamber members. Uh, if none of you want to go to any of those, and they offer them monthly, basically. Uh, so there's 12 options uh, throughout the year. Have any of y'all been to any are of we, those? Are we chamber members? Been. You've been. Yes, yes. ma'am. I know, We're but I'm just sure. asking, it. is no. it really used? Is it no, I don't think or it's just used paying that the 25 per whenever time we go? I think that's what we're better off doing. Yeah, that. let's take that out. I agree. So if you want to go, we'll find the money elsewhere in the budget. Yeah, well, if I mean, we can. If not, we can pay it out of our pocket. Yeah. 
for those of us that work, it's kind of hard to get to that. I think I went to one, and it was because of the sheriff, or maybe the city manager was you, talking. You spoke at one, too. At a common ground one? I think so. Uh, yeah. They all bled together. All right. Uh, the gym, we've what committed did, to that. What's his contributions, $10,000? For the gym? Is that where you're at? Okay, yeah. Legislation contributions. Yeah, that's the gym. That's Carver. Yeah. All right. We're now on page eight. So let's see here. Well, this is a salary issue here and the deputy clerk overtime. Okay. I'm trying to see okay. how much that is. So we've gone from 2% bonus to 1%, right? Yes. The COLA went from 2% to 1%, not the bonus. Okay. So the COLA is 1%. The bonus is supposed to be an average of 2%, but it can be 0 to 3%. 2 and, and it doesn't go well, towards the, the base. That's what they're calling a bonus is actually their merit increase or not? No. It's not it's a, a one-time. It's a one-time. It does not, it's yes. not applied to the well, That's what we used to do at Christmas. Right. We gave a $250 bonus or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it was legal to call it bonus, but... And instead of raises, we gave a two hundred and fifty dollars across the board to all the employees two weeks before Christmas. And this yeah. is only a, a one-time deal. Mm-hmm. And they'll never get a raise. Well, not this year if that's how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And everybody else does get a raise. I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here on salaries, all the salaries, all on one page. I, I have a sheet of that, but not in here. But these numbers that are shown here is the yours is different than mine. Yeah, I, well, that's, that's what you, you've got an old one there. That's this, this, yours is old. I don't think so. No. It doesn't look like mine. 820 August 23rd. Uh -huh. this, this is uh, 9 9, September 9th. Okay. So that? I said we had six or seven. You dropped off the new book at your office? Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, but um, I, I got these sheets. These were from the 23rd and the 27th. Now we're at the 9th. Okay. I think that's this. Uh -huh. Is it this book? Uh -huh. That's 9 9. Okay. There you go. So we're on page 8. It's confusing. These salary numbers that are in here are the top salary number it would be based on the COLA and any other increases, correct? So how it is whenever you see um, like a position and then the, pri the price that's there for their salary, that includes the COLA because that will be their salary effective October 1st. But instead of the 2% average been in each one, because as he mentioned, it will be a range between zero and 3%, just 2% being the average. Can you see the line item that says 2% one-time merit bonus on evaluation date? That one says $4,119 there. So that means that 4,119 will be distributed among those other positions, depending on what each position's evaluation is to determine what percentage. Oh bonus they get so the cola is in the salary already but that merit bonus is not is listed separately is my memory serving me right or wrong on the car allowance wasn't that 2400 right and that was in the presentation that asked for an Correct. additional 2400 right so going back to this one, I, I'm a little confused now too. A one-time merit, that means they get that 2%, but it carries through the rest of the year. It's not one time and it's only one time like a bonus would be. They're calling it a merit bonus. Just one check on your, on the payroll of your anniversary date. But so in the past, I guess they had evaluations and if it was successful, then they got a merit increase, which kind of equivalent to like a step increase of 2%. Right. 
So now they'll have that evaluation based on that. It'll determine a range between zero and 3%, whatever that number is, they get a check for that amount, just one check for that amount. Their salary then remains the same. So for somebody that's making $20,000, they would get a check for 400. Yes. Correct. Okay. But the number that's here includes the COLA only? The number for each position, yes. So if you see, like, I'll just pick the bottom one. It says Deputy City Clerk. It says 38759 there. That has the 1% COLA in it. And then when that person in that position has their evaluation on their anniversary date, depending on the results of that evaluation, they will get a one-time bonus of a percentage between 0 and 3%. And that payment for that one-time check will come out of that, that line item that has $4,119 in it for that department. You see it, Vice Mayor? Oh, yeah. Okay. I see it. So the administrative assistant is 25 hours a week, and it, we had it in here as 22,000, oh, including benefits, and this is 19,000. Right, so that's the FICA, benefits. Medicare, and you do pay retirement on that, you just don't pay any health insurance or other benefits. Okay. So I'd like to come back to the salaries so we can keep moving. What, uh, I just had to see that car allowance, it doubled this year. Right, he wanted to put his, uh, an increase on the car allowance and not in his salary. So his salary stays the same. Well, I guess in the, in the bottom line it is. Yeah. Well, plus cola. It doesn't say the same. It has cola in it. Uh, it won't have a cola in the car allowance. No. I said salary does it. Right. All right. Page nine. Um, recording fees. We've got to have that. Contracted services. Um, is there anything there that we can look at that's to a $13,976 if we do no code amendments and don't change any of our land development code or code of ordinance then that reduces the Unicode but then we can't codify or let people know what we changed uh, if we don't record our meetings we can reduce those costs if we don't uh, stream our meetings we won't have an ADA problem if we don't stream our meetings, if we don't record our meetings, then, then you can get rid of some of those. <laughs> All right. Microsoft Office 365, does each laptop have to have a license? Every person, user. every user. So you have, a, every, every commissioner has a license because you have an email account. Madam Mayor? Yes. This, this came up briefly before, but this says the commission has expressed an interest in holding another charter review to proposed voting district. I do you? not recall us doing that. Where are you? Page 10, about the middle of the page. We're on page 9. You, oh. You're ahead of us. I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. I don't see anything here to change, so well, I'm on. All right. So we're looking at documents, licensing. What does what I work to? That is the new system that was authorized about a month or so ago to replace the ENCODE Tyler 9 for business tax receipts. And then the other portion of that is the development software, which is business uh, is the permitting, code enforcement, and a couple of other things. Boy. 
There they are. Page 10, Code of Ordinances, Land Development, Muni Web Hosting, and Novus Agenda Program. So, wow, that's a lot of money for that agenda program. Is that really um, good? Yes, ma'am. Otherwise, we're back to you, you getting wrong agendas when we do it by word and email it back and forth, and we mm -hmm. don't know what's the current version. And then we have to merge them through uh, other means. And then okay. you won't have instant access to them once we publish on, online. And that amount doesn't change. We're locked into that. Okay. All right, this 2020 FACC Summer Conference. Um, I mean, I, it's uh, at the bottom down there. I was just so on, on elections, if you don't want to do that special election, we can take that 65 down to, to 35. Good. Well, we need to look at it, but I don't know that we can pull that together for this coming election. The census is going to do the work for you and save you a lot of work if you wait for the census results, and then you'll have it for the 22 election, That's which is your next one. 2020, okay. And the, there's nothing we could do with the... Um, fire inspection right? that's the contract right correct and we've even bumped that down uh, for this year we reduced it okay so what amount for the election expense 35 take it 235 or 235. down 35 okay that's fine so these Thank conferences you. are on page 11 at the top FACC summer conference the legislative action day hotel meeting Tallahassee official hotel mileage reimbursement probably to go to Tallahassee, I'm assuming. Is that right? Correct. Which FACC? That's the, the Florida Administration of City Clerks. That is a summer conference so that our deputy clerk can get her education in to get her CMC. And that's the only one that's requiring a hotel stay for the entire year. Where is it at? That one, I believe, is in West Palm Beach. Mm. Okay. It's four units. <clears throat> Four nights. Four nights at a, uh, roughly $159 a night for the hotel. Actually, it's a five-day conference. You stay four nights. All right, cell phones. How many cell We have two cell phones at $1,400. $700 each a year. Hosted voice service. I'm assuming you're talking about communications. That's the line item. Um, yes. That's not just cell phones. That's that's the phones here and every and whatever. Okay. So what, what about hosted when voice you said service? dollars for two cell phones. I'm like, wait a minute. So like thirty five bucks <laughs> a month for the smartphones. Okay. And, and hosted voice service. That's these phones. Oh. It's our. It's bundled with Bright House. It includes the internet and other things and language line that's for translation that's yeah we get charged if we use it okay it's pretty inexpensive mailings <clears throat> sure it's binding printing binding business cards copier so most of those are coming from the copier overages that get charged to the department uh, through whatever formula is used to divide up all those copier overages. That's a big portion of that, so the use of the copy machine. Okay. Advertising, $3,800. That's uh, 1700 not 38 I'm um, looking at the wrong line. Advertising. I don't think there's nothing we can do with that. No. No, it's, it is 3800 Well, no, it's... No, that's other current out charges and that's obligations. The one in the advertising. The oh, okay. It's above it. Oh, yeah. I hate the way that does that. It drives me nuts. So it breaks out on the next page. The installation of the chamber, um, the advance, which is our all-day meeting, uh, ethics training, that's lunch, swearing in or swearing at, <laughs> 250 <laughs> Common ground breakfast. Um, common ground breakfast. That's the Chamber of Commerce events. Historical designation celebration. Um, 
we keep putting it off and we're going to try and do it during the Florida Government Week in October. Yeah. Let's talk to the Historical Society again. Quarterly leadership training, State of the City. Six hundred dollars for the State of the City. I, we actually spent a little bit more than that last year, or for this year, because it was the first time we'd actually done something to actually try and promote the State of the City and and speak about how many things that Pinnell has done and accomplished in the last year. Normally, we never had any food or any type of thing at that so event. So this is ever. food. Yes, ma'am. As I was going to say, nobody paid me extra for the state of the city. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, you didn't get I a, got a really nice cake. <laughs> got a really nice cake, and we got the Terranovas. <laughs> and we did. And we got you some. garlic knots. Yeah, those garlic knots. I got good. you two trays of garlic knots. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> And, and actually, basically, the cost was a little bit more. We did get a sponsorship yeah, to, to help with that. So. All right, city supplies, small equipment, memberships. Here's memberships. Benel Rotary Club. Is that thing started? Yes. Uh, Deputy and city clerk, FACC. That's the, um, is this the registration? For both of us, yes. Florida Trend Magazine, how much is that? Thirty dollars each. No, we we're only doing one subscription page. to share. Flip it over one. That's right there. Actually, we pay for one, and we get a whole bunch. I've already canceled a number of them already. Yeah. Every time I keep getting them in. ICMA, city manager? Yes, that's one of the requirements in my contract. IIMC? That's the International Institute of Municipal Clerks that's required in order to be able to have your CMC or your MMC. All right. Document training, ADA document training. It seems like the that the cost of these things are split into multiple categories because I keep seeing that same thing. Like here's training down here, FACC training. Those, your, the notes are above the actual breakout of what the actual line item is costing. So your notes that tell you what the item is fall above what the cost is. And that's just the way the report prints. We've got a lot of money being spent in training. I'm not, I'm not against training, but I'm just trying to find places to, to cut. I mean, we're... Hmm. So we have salaries on the next page for the human resource manager. And then we have the accountant, the cashier, finance directors, finance specialist, human resources administrator, and utility billing specialist. Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rieger. Is this an increase in personnel over what's been there in the past by numbers of people? Um, it's Do not really an those? increase, but we had... Uh, yeah, there you had an agenda item back in, I want to say it was July, it was before I was here, but they kind of just restructured, they changed the names and the job descriptions, mm -hmm. but it's not an increase in people or positions. And we need this many people in the finance department to make it all happen? Well, so... No, we don't have them now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that's, sorry. That's I'm not sorry. A statement. That's not fair. I know. You're right. I'm sorry. You um, couldn't help me, so... So one of these, as mentioned, is a human resources administrator. It's not actually in finance because this is finance and administration. I realize that. Yeah. Um, so your cashier there, you can see it's only... a. Um, 25% of them because primarily what they're collecting are water and sewer and solid waste payments and then also your utility billing specialist that's only 5% being charged to the general fund because they are billing for water and sewer and solid waste so those employees are there under the direction of finance but they're not actually doing so the answer is we need this yes ma'am thank you <laughs> mm. So James Moore is $37,100, the audit is $28,900, and the financial prep is $46,000. I guess we can do anything about that. 
Oh, okay. So that's the total of the contract. But if you look right below it, um, the general fund's paying sixteen thousand six hundred and ninety-five dollars of the audit fees because water and sewer pay some, and solid waste does too. And then the actuarial gets split as well. So yeah, the top tells you how much the total is. That's a contract that you already have approved with them for several more years. So yeah. When does that contract expire? Um, I can look it up for you while you go on. 2022, Chris, and thanks. Well, we probably need to put that out for RFP. It was just approved last year. It just was. Five years, five years. okay. Years. All right, so all this software we can't do anything about, page 17. So, I mean, what we're going to end up looking at when it's all said and done is going back to salaries and... Uh, capital expenditures. That's where the money's going to be. This is not going to get us where we need to be. Correct. Uh, finance director has 12 cell phones. No. Oops. First of all, I don't have any city issued cell phone. Um, I think that was in there. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, prior. So we can take that out? Cell phone or not. You can take that out. I don't have a city, and I will not have a city issued cell phone. Okay, there's six hundred dollars right there. <laughs> I'll take it. Six hundred dollars. I'm on the bottom of page seventeen. It is hosted voice service. That's the phones. Okay. Yeah. So as Donnie mentioned before, the phones that everyone has, but the reason you'll see them in each of the individual budgets is because however many people and phones they have, it's split out and charged to that department. You see, finance and HR, yeah. posted mailing. All right, page 18, business cards, advertising, budget ad. Oh, now here we go. Is this where I saw this? It does go over the budget. What's Rental, that? lease, expense. Oh, that's for, that's not for, that's not the muni thing. That's um, copiers, copiers and stuff. Copiers, okay. right. Got it. So when you look on the next page, you see employee Christmas party and gift cards at 2500 employee recognition. No, $2, it's 2500 oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, employee recognition programs, 2000 open enrollment, vendor lunch, 650 and promote healthy eating is 360. What does the employee recognition program look like? Hey. Can you turn it on, please? At the top. Sorry, good evening. The employee recognition program would be for, like, during Christmas time when we do the 5 and 10. Um, 15, 20 year employee recognition. We've done that. Um, I think it was probably about four or five years ago we did that. So it would be for that or if there is um, basically if they like we had the meter install that happened and the director wanted to do something additional for those employees that helped with that. So it would be money towards that as well. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a, small program that we want to develop but just in a small way uh, recognize individuals on the spot that do something <laughs> above and beyond all right page 20 cpr first aid compliance training first aid cpr annual conference uh, what is fgfoa Florida Government Finance Officers Association. She'd be the only one in here to know that, wouldn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yes, probably. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yep. Do we have somebody come in for the uh, CPR training, or do we have somebody on staff that can train? We've already talked to Flagler County. They did it for us three years ago. They're going to come in and do it for us again, and they only charge us the cost of the card, which is the $6 per employee, so that we don't pay them. We just pay for the cost of the card. And is some of this training, I mean, maybe going back and looking at some of the training is something that we could piggyback with the county that they're doing or Palm Coast 
um, to be able to coordinate and get the benefit of the bigger people with bigger budgets to get training. I know some of your specialty trainings and conferences don't won't work that way, but maybe some of this, some other things. So if y'all just look at that. All right. 21, legal, the same. Yeah. He's so consistent. <laughs> Well, he gets a micro off Office 365 too, huh? Yes, he has a city email. Hmm. All right, IS 22, senior analyst. That's uh, is that Donnie? It's that's Donnie. Is that you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And your your salary split? Yes, ma'am. It's only 55 percent in the general fund, and the rest is in the enterprise funds. Aruba Networks. That sounds sexy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're going on vacation. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I feel, is it time to go yet? All of our network infrastructure, like the wireless there and the switch in the back of the room and the switches throughout the complex, they're all Aruba networks and we pay maintenance on it to, for right. firmware upgrades and availability of parts. Okay. So if something goes down, we get a replacement. And Quest software? Quest? Quest is our backup system. For our computers? Yeah. Backs up all of our data and it stores, uh, uh, replicates a copy at our water plant. How often does it back up? Depends on the system. The production database during a production day, in other words, from 7.30 to 5 every 15 minutes. Really? Wow. Now the, the file server Obviously, people aren't in there in the file server all the time. It only grabs a, a snapshot of that every hour. But after hours, it only does it every hour. Wow. Okay. I'm surprised it's that mm. frequent. Wow. All right. What is common look remediation suite annual subs? Sounds like a sandwich. <laughs> common look is a software program that uh, two of us have been testing out, myself and Deb from... Uh, Dustin's office over there. Uh, it helps with ADA remediation documents. Mm. So when you're you're trying to do the ADA remediation in Adobe and Adobe chokes, you go <laughs> you go to the common look and you can get it figured out. Wow. Uh, I had proposed uh, buying eight copies, one for each of the administrators, and it's a subscription. It's an annual basis. Wow. Does every administrator need that? Anybody who's doing agenda items, yes. Sorry, anybody who's doing what? But wouldn't it come through the city clerk and then the city clerk would remediate them? No? That would take a lot of time on her half. Uh, it, it takes quite a while to ADA compliant items. And it's the reason I gave it to Deb, her second day here, they handed her a 273 page document and said, do it. <laughs> and she showed up the next day? Yeah. Oh, she loved it and asked for more. She's great wow. for it. Um, That's amazing. Every single attachment on our agendas has to be ADA. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving right on down. Municipal complex. Madam Mayor. Yep. What's that Flagler County? Um, oh, that's the, okay, so it's agreement with them. Yeah. See anything there? I'm looking. Yeah. Florida Local Government Information System. What is that? It's an association. It's a spinoff of the League of Cities. What do they do for us? Oh, oh, is that yeah. your IT part of yeah. League of Cities? Okay. Correct. All right. All right. Training. Um, common look training. What is that? Train 10 employees on the use of software for ADA remediation. So this is the training for the ADA? Correct. Wow. $6,000. Computer replacements, firewall replacement, website redesign. The website's what, $10,000. How many computers are you planning to replace for $30,000? Probably going to be like three kids servers. We've got like three servers that I need to replace. So it's 50000 That's the total. 
Oh, that's 30,000 30, okay. for the, gotcha. traditionally I program $30,000 every year for computer replacements. And then the other 20,000, 10,000 is for the firewall replacement and 10,000 for the website. Municipal complex, page 29. We need maintenance on our air conditioners. Hmm. General maintenance, contracted service, electrical service, $5,000. What's that for? Electrical service. Which page, ma'am? We're on page 29. 29. First set of figures, $5,088. It's under the 3401 at the top. That one I cannot recall. I, I don't know if we... I don't think it was a carry over for it. It might have been that that actually should have gone under Parks and Rec, maybe, and not this building. Yeah. Is it lights? Street light? The lights? No, the we were trying to get a contractor, uh, a, a con an electrical contractor under contract to come in and do a bunch of our electrical work that needs to be updated and fixed, uh, particularly around like Lake Lucille. All of those don't support anything more than a string of lights. Uh, so that's not special event ready. Uh, so it, it shouldn't have been under this budget act. It should have gone under uh, parks and rec. But if we don't do the electrical contractor, then we just pay as needed. We don't fix anything until it breaks. So we can take that one. I mean, we, we, can, we can fix it as it breaks. We do have some repair budget in here. Okay. Yes. Make sure you capture everything that would like that that we're cu cutting, because basically, at some point we need to put it in there and we need to push it to next year. Well, we got to get more revenue in here before we push it to next year. Yes. Florida Power and Light, nineteen thousand dollars. Can we go solar? You know, I talked to you about that a couple of months ago, probably eight or nine months ago, where there was a facility up on the beach somewhere, Fernandina Beach or Jacksonville Beach. And they took either their water plant or their wastewater plant and they went solar. Saved a tremendous amount of money. Did it in, inside. It was inside done. Initial cost is it's What's that? The initial cost. Get it I think they got cost. as a grant. I think they got the initial cost as a grant. If you could do that, you'd be saving money. Yeah. Can you speak to that, Dustin? I, I cannot speak on to solar power but i would imagine you would need a massive amount of land to power a wastewater treatment plant the solar power panels we all need to check on that because um we they did it and i don't power. know how they did it but okay. that's one of those things that came Which up there? Again. it's either fernandina beach or jacksonville beach or one of those beaches <laughs> AC duct reconfiguration. What's that? <laughs> AC duct reconfiguration. Yeah, we can. We can. What is that? We can cancel that. That was to lighten the load on the AC units that we currently have because they, the way that the walls were built, some of the units work harder than others, and the way that the offices are built. Uh, in order to get the ducts lined up correctly so that one unit's not working harder than the other, then thereby when one blows, you know, colder and then making the other one work harder to, to try and compensate for that, uh, we can reschedule that for an upcoming year. Um, okay. We just can't cut the AC maintenance contract then. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Fire alarm maintenance contract, front door ADA compliant. Front door is that going to be like a, a signal and it opens? It, we would we would have to we have to move the kick the kick, the plate on the bottom and we have to put in the push plates and we've already had two accidents with wheelchair people who have fallen out of their wheelchairs at that door. Okay. And what building are we painting? Thousand dollars, thousand fifty six. It's the is last that, one on the list. Is there. that our building? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we had, we had that in there to paint the interior of City Hall. That's a lot of paint, ain't it? Yeah, I was thinking you might can get one of our community people, groups that are looking for projects. 
also I've reached out to the Boy Scouts about doing the ADA parking space there for the police station or the police department entrance that's the spot that's lacking in an ADA parking space now and it is under they are considering it right if they don't do it we will have to try and find a way to do it at well, some point in time I think it's epic that does quarterly or biannual community projects they're always looking for something to do have offered what can we do what can we do they painted um, the Versi Lee building. Um, what else did they paint? I think they painted this building. Didn't they paint this building? Our, our maintenance tech painted Versi Lee. No, they were painting over there at Versi Lee. I was over there. There was okay. like eight people on a ladder painting on a Saturday. Um, maybe it's another time. So, so take out the paint or leave in the paint. I'm sorry. Do we need the paint? No, if we're looking for dollars. We can push out another year. Okay. What is the installation of returns and mini split for five grand? Right that? above that, the bank. That's fixing areas over the police department. And there, there are AC issues. We just had another one there. All right. About 19,000 on that page. Plugging along here, and the next page is uh, salaries for the police department. I don't see anything else there except for money on loans. Page 31 now. Uh, special operations chief, corporal, corporal officer, officer sergeant, insurance, new world system maintenance. Well, is that your uh, radios? That's our computer programs. Yeah, it's the computer aided dispatch and their alarms, their the record system is contracted through the county. Oh, okay. All right. Page 32. 31? 30, 32. 32. 31's mostly salaries. There's security cameras down here. Uh, is that uh, on FPL polls, average charge is $70.35. Is that the cameras that don't work? Well, they work sometimes. They just need to be updated. I don't know what that is, Chief. I, we're, we're not charged, that I'm aware of, we're not charged per month for the uh, cameras that we have in place. Just the ones that uh, you mentioned, the surveillance cameras in the housing authority. There is a bill that comes in. I just ate standpoint in a little bit ago. News to me. Uh, <laughs> why are we paying for maintenance in, in uh, the housing? If they have money over there, why are we doing it? That's a good question. That I don't know. So I just, because I'm date stamping in mail right now, I just know that I saw that the stack of FPL bills that were came in when we get them for the list stations, when we get them for the lights for that we maintain, and then some of them were for cameras. They just said camera South Bakker or something. I mean, I don't know where they are, things like that, but there are a couple that were for cameras. I'm not aware of that bill on my, on our. Hmm. Yeah. I think we need to look at that. So there's a call somewhere for that? And that's the AFL bills, yeah. Oh, and the FP and L bills. So that's $70. Seventy dollars a month. Yeah, I don't know why it's dollars. Could be a reason. What about the new um, system that's going in with the county? The new um, antenna radio radios. Is that this uh, interceptor lease annual sum prepaid? The top of page thirty-three. No, that's that's uh, the vehicles. Oh, that says Flagler County radio system. Is that oh, it? On the top of the page. I'm sorry, but you said it's, uh, it's interceptor. It's like six page, six below, right below interceptor notes. Right 
sorry. New radio system purchased yeah. okay. by the county. All right. So vehicle maintenance under the police department, that's for the vehicles that we are not shifting out? Uh, we re reduced that almost 7,000. But once we get the new ones, you won't have to have that one. Uh, unfortunately, we still have a lot of vehicles. Once we get the new ones, we'll have eight uh, new vehicle, newer vehicles. Um, but we still have, uh, if we get to two officers, we'll have 14 people. So we still have to keep the older vehicles. And I have a, I have a list of the vehicles um, here. And uh, we still have to maintain some of our older vehicles um, just to keep them on the road. Plus, we need to have pool vehicles. Right now, currently, we only have one pool vehicle for uh, uh, 12 of us in case one of them go down. All the others are deadline. Just one? Just one. We're, we're trying to patch a couple of the old uh, 2008 Dodges just so we could get them uh, the run, but they don't have any equipment or radio or anything in them. But we're de that's how desperate we are. So you said you took this from 10,000 to 7,000. It's not reflected here, right? No, no ma'am. No, I, I took it down to from uh, 16,469 down to 10. Oh, okay. And we've used every bit of that um, this past year to uh, repair. Okay. They said they needed cars for the city too. Is that for public works or? Um, I don't know. You have cars for public works. <laughs> For public works, we're, at, we're leasing three work trucks and one pool vehicle, a crossover type SUV, for all the, the departments in City Hall to utilize. And then Parks and Rex is doing two, two trucks. I see one of y'all in the shop. I didn't hear you. What's that? that one of y'all's trucks are in the shop over at the county, ain't it? <laughs> yes. At the county? I think this, your the truck. Waste, the solid waste truck is over solid here. Waste. Trying to get fixed. Every time I go into work every morning, it's either a police car or one of their cars. All right. Anything else here? What is miscellaneous courses? That's on page 35 all the way to the bottom, right above Police One Academy. Yeah, all the way at the bottom. See surveillance system? Uh, one, uh, two up. Two lines, three lines. Miscellaneous courses. Uh, courses that, these are courses that come up training for the officers some of which not all courses at Daytona State are free. Oh. I, I did, I've gone through this budget a couple of times and we've really cut on our training. And uh, again, we need to keep our officers well trained. I agree. All right. All right, surveillance update, city surveillance system. I don't see anything there on that. That was the one that Donnie came up and talked about that was in the slide. 20,000 that's over in the housing area. So again, I think we need to have a conversation with the housing, and I think they need to be paying some of this stuff. I don't know why we're paying it. Yeah. Mayor, I did help them with a, a grant, but it, it was for additional cameras to them, lighting, and fencing. So we were not going to, we'll benefit by that as well. Right. But it had because nothing to lights. do with the existing um, cameras. Right. And that was, like I said, back in 2010. But if they got the grant and they're getting all this stuff, but they're billing us for it, billing us for maintenance. You're getting your steps in tonight, aren't you? I guess so. Uh, no, the Housing Authority isn't billing us for it. And I don't know how the agreement came about. Like I said, it predates me. Um, 
and there is no written agreement between that I'm aware of anyway between the and I've looked <laughs> between the Housing Authority and the City of Bunnell on who's maintaining this thing. Originally, the um, the server which collected all the video and stuff like that was housed in the PD. It was housed in the Coquina building. Um, I wasn't aware until tonight that we were being charged by FPNL. Um, in fact, I, I spoke to FPNL recently about putting some additional cameras at um, Eddie Johnson Park and then the new Lewis L. Jackson Park, um, and they wanted me to meter it. And I, I kept arguing with them that all of our other locations aren't metered. There's no meter there. It's just a plug that I assume FPNL put in because it comes right off of their transformer. Uh, so I, I was not aware that we, I, I assumed that it was part of the um, streetlights. That was probably included in the streetlight because it's a flat fee that they would charge us. Um, how that arrangement came about, I have no idea. But like I say, it all predates me. Uh, I did read through the minutes and stuff like that, and Commissioner Tucker said we needed to expand it beyond what it was um, what it was originally intended for. To that, I'm aware of it never did. Um, but yeah, the the city, I guess, was responsible for maintaining it and paying the power bill. And Mayor, most most of the cameras, like I said, is still protected under criminal to act of criminal intelligence. So I know we have some folks that have violated that statute. Um, however, uh, they're in common areas that, uh, not just housing authority. I mean, it's the streets and so forth. So you can't just say it's housing authority. It's uh, in public areas. How long have the system been out? Excuse me? How long has the system been? Uh, when I've been told, the little research we were able to find was 2010. This was an arrangement done by uh, some former uh, officers. It's, how long has the system not been functional? It, it works. It's it's intermittent, and uh, we have problems with people uh, breaking it. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of communication in violation of uh, our uh, active criminal intelligence statutes. and. Uh, but they've been broken. They miss fire. We're constantly having to try to fix them. The lenses are old. Um, very hard to get good pictures. Pretty ineffective. Mayor, what we will do is see if we can find some funding, a grant, a law enforcement grant to address this. Okay. All right. For further, I'd like a 10-minute break. Oh, yeah. Was this the same number? talked about before the same number 20,000 on this item yes ma'am that it was in the presentation like I said the presentation oh, okay. pulled okay. certain okay. things out yes yeah we need a break right you remember because Bert was involved in it I got on in 11 to have a good time just kidding I'm telling you it was a grant we're still a ways away. Um, I, I would like to ask the city manager to get with the directors and see if there's anything in their departments that uh, they can they can come back to us with. Well, let's you bring know, that up when we come back. You know, because uh, we're, we're, we're a ways away. Yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Oh. 
I'm trying to hear your voice. So we take so six point four three and six point one one four is a point three one six so as increase okay. over the rollback rate is one four. That's five point one seven percent. So you can roll it back one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the increase. Well, you didn't show me the bracket, so I didn't know how to follow. When you, yeah. Well, I got the right. See, I mean, so, I thought I was looking. Yeah, okay. Okay. but that's a state by. law that you have to announce that and stuff, and they give you like this whole. Oh, when you when you go into the, the, the calculation. Yeah, so it's a five point one seven percent increase over last year's millage rate. Yeah. You're like, oh no, don't mess it up. We just the, 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 the our gym just opened up. Just I got Ten, 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, I bet they do. And <laughs> your answer. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, man, that's almost past my bedtime. Almost past my bedtime. Hit that thing like you mean it. <laughs> I hate to gallow my own people. I almost did something to you, but I didn't do it. What's that? They said, we got to have air conditioner. I was going to look at you. What was it like back in them days with no air conditioner? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I grew up without air conditioner. That cruel, that, Yeah. See that? Yeah. No Am I getting the whole conversation? All right. All right, so we've got probably, I don't know, 46, 60. Thank you. I'm sorry, what what is that? So a suggestion's been made to start with the tentative budget at exactly the same level as the original 219 and uh, then make staff have the budget amendments to justify back for October 1 for each extra item so that we move from where we were last year up instead of where we are here going down. Just a thought. Um, I'm sorry, I, did, I missed that. I, I'm sorry. You're, conceptually, what are we doing? Well, I'm not saying we're doing it. No, I'm just saying it's it's an it's a suggestion. To do what? To start with the 2019 budget and move up with the justifications and request instead of starting where where we are now and trying to go down, so that we know where we are as far as the foundation and build on that versus trying to cut out 
you know, five hundred eighty thousand dollars worth. That's the best news I've heard all night. I see that working. Well, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but Mayor, this we're not going to get the five hundred eighty thousand dollars right now. Mayor, let me uh, make a suggestion. Is that uh, basically, you know, we have put out to you, you know, what those uh, priorities are, and that's why I was sh sharing that as we go through the line items, you weren't going to find, you know, a whole lot. So what I'm going to do, uh, since you all you all see the the the, the areas, uh, we're going to bring back uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon. We will have a balanced budget, and we will make uh, basically those tough decisions and uh, and we will let you know what those decisions were or you'll see where those cuts uh, were so madam mayor mr. nobles I got to say it uh, as far as cutting the budget and everything public works we can't afford to cut much there because you got to have it police department that's for safety you can't be cutting there neither. It's just, it's, it's hard to do any cuts there when it comes to public safety. Well, the problem, I, I agree with you. I, I'm certainly not disagreeing. But we can't take $578,000 out of reserves either. Uh, because no. one, no. we'll deplete that very quickly. And two, when we give salary increases and when we give benefit increases, those are, are ongoing. And so what you're doing is you're stacking up and it's going to make it for worse later. So, I mean, you know. And let me just tell you right off that, uh, basically, we will cut the administrative assistant request. That's 22000 We will cut the 10800 to title of content manager. We will reduce... Um, this is just just what I see right off that. We will actually cut the land acquisition, which is ten thousand. Uh, we will uh, decrease the road resurfacing back. Um, we had added an additional five thousand dollars. We will cut that, uh, and we will reduce the speed reduction devices from five thousand to twenty five hundred. And there there will be some uh, additional tough tough decisions that we will make uh, that will will get us there. And let me say this, it will not compromise the equipment that we need. It will not compromise our public safety. There may be some reductions there, but it will not compromise our safety. Um, you know, the reality of it is that uh, we have to find those cuts uh, uh, throughout the budget. I wish it was one department that had a whole lot of fluff, but it's not. And uh, so this evening, you can see, uh, basically, I, I don't think any of you all can disagree that uh, these areas are, are needed. Uh, but as the mayor indicated, you know, as we're moving forward in this next year, uh, we most definitely have to, to identify additional revenue streams, not just one time, uh, but basically uh, uh, ongoing revenue streams. And so this, the, the budget process, I want you to be prepared, will continue throughout December uh, because we're going to basically bring the information back where you can really understand where we are financially and how do we move, move forward. Um, and so uh, we will bring you back Monday and like I said, about tomorrow afternoon, uh, we will have a balanced budget for you. Madam Mayor. Commissioner Rieger. I would like to suggest that the changes that are made are notated so that we can really take a good look at what's going on and so that we don't, and here we go again. Now we're off to what, budget number eight? I mean, we, 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 and I'd like to be able to see that where those changes are delineated within what we're looking at. The other thing is, is um, from the uh, standpoint of approval budgets, I, I was looking in my files and I don't believe that I have a complete and total water, sewer, and, um, you know, a complete budget for the enterprise funds. 
that has finalized it. I don't have that. I don't think any of us do. I say that's correct. You do not. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so can you make the changes like in red or blue or green or some color so that we can? <laughs> I would say this system <laughs> No. But what we can do is make you a list of every line of this change from this to this and the difference. Something. Okay. Give it to you. All right. Print it and use a yellow marker. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Rogers. So uh, Monday, will the, will the meeting start a little earlier? And we'll, we'll, what time we'll is the meeting? Monday? Six. So can we this start? This is your public budget hearing. So do we, have, we start a little earlier for this? Or? You can't start. This is it. Yeah. Okay, this is it? Yeah, okay. I mean, you can make changes then. I mean, it's the is, public. Is Commissioner Baxter going to be there Monday? He's hoping to. Yeah. He, okay. I mean, he planned to be here tonight. But okay. it just, yeah. And will we have some good opportunity to look at that before Monday? Well, tomorrow is Friday. We're going to try to get it to you before the weekend. Okay. You're off tomorrow. All right. Oh, dang. Tomorrow is Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow is Friday. I mean, in, my, in, in my head, I pretty much see it. Okay. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, I thank you so all you for your input tonight and uh, for you actually looking at those priorities and, um, you know, at least you saw them. Uh, no one would, will say that we cut things that y'all didn't see, uh, and uh, we will, by late tomorrow afternoon, have a revised balanced budget. All right. Is there another so, place to acquire fund, funds, like from the like where? enterprise funds? Is there a place for us to acquire funds to use in the general fund? Anywhere? Anyhow? That's what we're trying to avoid. Correct. Yeah, and not at this point in time anyways, because, I mean, there's alternative revenues and things we can look at, but most of those things, the work has to be done for the next fiscal year Correct. because there's deadlines of things you have to do. So not, your, your revenues are what your revenues are at this point. The question now is how much is the difference going to be between whatever that final, anything in the expenditures that exceeds $363,850 increase is come, going to come from your reserves to balance your budget. It's the only option you have at this point. So it's, you, have, you um, cut about 91,000 based on what Dr. Jackson just um, listed. That's about another 50,000. So you're about 140,000 um, cut from the 580 right now. That leaves you about, what is that? So, and another over 400,000 more you're still looking for, or you're just using the reserves in that amount. Okay. Any other comments? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Do I get motion to adjourn by Vice Mayor Rogers, second by Commissioner Nobles. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you for dinner.